how to change the rechargeable battery or the capacitor on a Seiko Kinetic Watch. I've got a Seiko diver here, 5M236A60, and it takes this kind of battery. I, I know it's a capacitor, I'm gonna keep calling it a rechargeable battery because I think that's most common. 3023 5MY, not all Seiko Kinetics take the same type of rechargeable battery, so do check on mizeni.com. I've got a list of various movements and the battery types they require. What tools do we need? We need uh, a watch opener. I did a video comparing different watch openers and the ball, plastic ball came out the best. So we're gonna use that. We'll need a couple of uh, tweezers, ideally non-conducting ones for when we handle the new battery. And then finally, screwdriver. We might get away with just one screwdriver here or I might need something a bit smaller as well. We'll see how we go. Right, let's start off by opening the watch. First things first, and to open the watch, I'm gonna use the blue ball. I think it'll be okay just holding it. Yeah, there we go. If it's too difficult, you can use uh, a watch case holder, but this has worked well. So, unscrew the back. To access the battery area, we need to take off the rotor here and do that by unscrewing the screw in the center. Ideally, we don't want to touch any part of the movement with our fingers because of the oils and grease on our fingers. So either wear finger cots if you've got them. Today I'm gonna to wear these surgical gloves. Even a piece of plastic somehow kind of held down like that, I think is better than nothing. Now I'll need to hold the rotor as I do it because if you don't hold the rotor, it just turns around. So hold that down and Okay, it wasn't too tight, unscrew that. That's it. And try and remove all the screws that you take off with tweezers. Next is to take off this little wheel thing here, which is nice and easy because it just comes off. It has got a square hole, so when we put it back, make sure we got it um, firmly on that square pivot. All right, now we are ready to access the battery area. And to do that, it's got a kind of cover on it, and we need to take off these two screws here. I think I'll need a smaller screwdriver for this. I should say at this point, make sure you don't touch those copper coils because they break very easily. And if one wire breaks in there, the watch won't work. Okay, and now we can lift off this metal cover and it should have a red plastic sort of sleeve underneath it as well. Yeah, there we go. Usually when you get the new battery, you'll get that included as well but it's best to keep it just in case okay at this point the old battery should just pop out pretty easily oh there we go okay now time for the new one i've opened the battery got it out here and it's ready to go in we want the side with the connector on facing towards us Incidentally, this is a Panasonic MT920 battery, but with these special connectors. So you can't just use any MT920 battery. You've got to make sure it's one like this. I think it's only Seiko that does these. Anyway, we want to slide it in. It's not too tricky, but there is a sort of little indent on the left here where this connector slots in. I think that was it. And that means on the right hand side, this metal connector here is just covering uh, the metal part so it's getting a good uh, connection there. And we should be able to just to sort of press that in. Yeah, that feels like it's in safely. Okay, and now we do the reverse of what we did earlier. We just put the cover back on this part. I'm gonna put the red plastic part and the metal cover on separately one by one because they're a bit fiddly. Uh, I've got the metal tweezers now. You may have noticed earlier they were magnetized. So I've uh, just gone and demagnetized them. It should be okay now. There is a little plastic post just here where that hole should hook onto. I think that's done it. Okay. 
The metal plate has the same kind of hole sticking out just at the top of it there, which will go over the same plastic post. Okay. Press it down a little bit. Okay, there is another post just here as well. Press that down. Yeah, that seems to be on. Uh, okay, that seems to be on. Okay. Right, next we put the two screws back. Okay, that was a little bit more tricky because of the springiness of the, the metal with the sort of springy plates underneath, but that seems to be okay. Next is this wheel, which should be put in this way, so it kind of bumps up like a hat. And the square hole is there so that it grips onto that center pivot, so we need to make sure the orientation is okay by just sort of wiggling it around a bit. Oh, there we go. That's good. Okay, right. Difficult stuff done. The last bit is just to put the rotor back on and screw that on tightly. Again, this is not perfectly round. And so we need to slide that on the pivot and then wiggle it a bit until it slots into place. Ah, there we go. Okay. Took a while. Okay, and again with the gloves on or the finger cuts on, we can hold the rotor as we screw it on tightly. Okay, I think that's good. And now the moment of truth. Does it work? So if we turn it over. There we go. Yes. Very nice. I find sometimes that immediately after changing it, it still jumps in the two second intervals. And so either leave it a, a couple of seconds or shake it about a bit as you normally would charge but anyway that is how to change the rechargeable battery or the capacitor on a seiko kinetic watch